G'day guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson I'm going to teach you how to play Jingle Bell Rock on the acoustic guitar and it's a lot of fun to play. Now if you want to master your chords back to front then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve any guitar in general then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Well, let's jump into the lesson. Alright, so I'll start by teaching you all the chords and then in the second part of this video I'll teach you all the lead licks like the intro and the outro. Now first off, let's just establish the strumming pattern. It's really, really simple. It's just a simple down, up, down, up strumming pattern at eighth notes. And this is gonna be used continuously throughout the song. The only thing you need to consider though is that there's a swing feel to this. So it's one, two, and three, and four, and. Now what swing feel means is that the down beats are held for longer than the up beats. So you'll notice that when I hit on the one, two, three, or four, it's held out longer and then the up strum is really quick. So one, and two, and three, and four, and. And that's gonna be used throughout this whole song. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Up, one, and two, and three, and four, and. So let's start with the first verse. We're gonna start with a D chord. And then we're gonna to go to a D major seven. So lift your middle and ring finger, keep your index finger where it is, but then pivot and bar it across the second frets of the third, second and first strings. And we're strumming from the fourth string onwards again. So that's D major seven. Now, if you see two chords within one set of brackets, that means that those two chords share one strumming pattern. And the point at which we'll change chords is on the three beat here. So one, two, And then at this point, we're gonna to go to a D6. So keep your index finger where it is, but pivot it back up so it's only pushing down on the second fret of the third string. And your middle finger will go onto the second fret of the first string. And you wanna leave that second string open. So this is D6. And then we go back to a D for the second bar. So the first line of chords. For the second line of chords, we go back to D6. So from that D, you just lift your ring finger and then we go to a D sharp diminished seven. So with your index and middle finger, shift their position up one string and then down one fret. And then you'll take your ring and pinky finger and put them on the second frets of the third and first string. So this is D sharp diminished seven. Now you don't have to play this D sharp diminished seven. You can just play that D six for the full bar if you wanted to, but this D sharp diminished seven sounds really nice. And then after that, we're going to E minor seven. So keep your pinky finger where it is, shift down your ring finger one string, and then shift these two fingers up to the third fret. And with your index and middle finger, put them on the second frets of the fifth and fourth strings. You can strum all the strings here, and that's E minor seven and then we go to an A7. So from this shape, just lift your index and pinky finger and slide your ring finger down one fret. And we're strumming from the fifth string onwards. So this second line of chords. For the third line of chords, it's just the E minor seven to the A7 played for two bars. And then for the fourth line of chords, it's the E minor seven for a full bar. So we're not changing on that three beat here. This is played for a full strumming pattern by itself. And then the same with the A7. So that's verse one, which will sound like this. Now we get to verse number two, which is also the same as verse number three. It's almost identical to verse number one with the exception of the final line of chords. So instead of playing this E minor seven for a full bar, we're going to play E minor seven to the A seven, and then we're going to D and D seven. So from the D to the D seven, you will need to shift your positions 
Now, with all these chord changes, just work on them slowly and practice this at a slow speed and then work your way up. I also always encourage you to use a metronome as well when you're practicing this at a slower speed. But that's the only difference between verse one and verse two, just that final line of chords. So verse two sounds like this. Next we get to the chorus and there's just two lines of chords here. We're gonna start with the G chord and this is just played for one full strumming pattern. Then we have a G sharp diminished seven. So keep your middle finger where it is, slide it up one fret and then put your ring finger on the fourth fret of the third string. And with your index finger, you'll bar across the third fret of the fourth, third and second string. So, this is G sharp diminished seven. And you wanna keep that fifth string muted. And you can do that just by lightly touching it with the middle finger as you're fretting the fourth fret of the sixth string. That's played for one full strumming pattern. And then we go to D for two full strumming patterns. The second line of chords is E7, which is the same as the E except you lift your ring finger for two full strumming patterns. And then we're going to hit an A chord. So you can hit it like this, but I just like to bar my index finger across the second fret, the fourth, third, and second strings. We're just strumming it once, muting it for the rest of the bar, and then we end the chorus with a short riff. The riff is just four notes on the sixth string. And we're gonna start on the end beat after the one with an up pick, and that's gonna be on the fifth fret of the sixth string. So it'll be like this. And then on the next down stroke, you go to the third fret, and then on the three beat, second fret, and then on the fourth beat, open sixth string. So one and two and three and four and out. Now remember, it's good to start on an up pluck there because that riff starts on an end beat. So one and two and three and four and. So the chorus in total sounds like this. Now we get to the first post chorus. Now the first line of chords is the same as the first line of chords for the verses, so that's pretty simple. Now for the second line of chords, we go to our D6 from our D, so just lift your ring finger. Now we're gonna play that for one full strumming pattern and then we go to a B7 chord like this for one full strumming pattern. So middle ring and pinky finger on the second fret, so the fifth, third and first string, index finger on the first fret of the fourth string. Play that for one full strumming pattern. For the third line of chords, it's a G and then a G minor. Now the easiest way to transition here from this open G is to just move your ring and pinky finger up one string. So third frets of the third and second string and your index finger shifts down one fret to the first fret of the fifth string and you keep your middle finger there. What we'll also do is mute that fourth string by just having your index finger rest across it as it's fretting the note above. Alternatively, the other thing you can do is play the G like this as a bar chord and then lift your middle finger to go to the G minor. But in the playthrough at the end, I'll be doing the G like this and then the G minor like this. Choose the one that's more comfortable for you. So without the bar, or with the bar. With that G minor, you can make it even simpler by cutting out that fifth string note and just muting the fifth and fourth string. So you just have that sixth, third, 
and second string ring out and muting everything else. That's an easier way of doing it. For the fourth line of chords, we have E minor and A7 sharing a strumming pattern and then D for one full strumming pattern. So again, remember, if there's two chords within a set of brackets, they're sharing one strumming pattern, or each chord is being played for two beats. But if you have one chord by itself, that means it's played for the full strumming pattern. In total, this is what post-chorus one sounds like. Next is post-chorus 2. Now, post-chorus 2 is almost identical to post-chorus 1, except there's an extra line of chords here, and the fourth line of chords is adjusted a tiny bit. So, starting with the fourth line of chords, instead of going with the D, we're just going to repeat that E minor 7 to A7 again. Then for the fifth line of chords, E minor 7 to A7, and then we're going to a D. So, for the first D, it's played for one full strumming pattern, and then for the second strumming pattern, we're going to adjust it. So we're gonna play the first down, up, down, up, but then you're just gonna mute at that point. So just stop all the strings ringing out with your side of your palm. One, and two, and mute. And then on the four beat, we'll strum that D chord to end the song. So I'll just play from the last two lines of chords for this post-chorus two. And those are all the chords that you need to learn for this song. So it's pretty simple. There's a few spicy chords thrown in there, but they're not too difficult to play. Okay, so now I'll teach you how to play the intro, which is a lot of fun. Now, usually this is played on an electric guitar up high, but since this is an acoustic tutorial, I'll teach you an easier way to play it, especially if you don't have a cutaway and can't reach up that high. So we'll start at the seventh frets of the third and second string with your ring and pinky finger. You're gonna hit both these strings now you can strum it with a down, up, down, like that, and just focus on those two strings, or you can just play them with down strums. So one and two, or one and two, whatever's more comfortable for you. And then after that, we're just going to lift your ring finger and shift down to the sixth fret of the third string with your middle finger. So three and four and. And then put your ring finger back down to where it was, and you're gonna pluck the seventh fret of the second string, and then with your index, fifth fret of the first string, seventh fret of the third, and then down to the fifth fret of the second string. So those four notes, one and two and. You're gonna pluck that fifth fret again and slide it up to sixth, three. On the end beat, we're gonna go back down to the fifth fret, pluck that, and then seventh fret of the third string, then down to fourth fret. So that bar, one and two and three and four and. And we end this run by hitting the seventh fret of the fourth string and holding that out for the full bar. So this full lick, one and two and three and four. and one. And then to end this, we're doing that riff that we had at the end of the chorus, which is fifth fret with an upstroke, third fret, second fret, and open sixth string. So in total for the intro, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now the final lick is the lead in the outro. Now it's not necessary to play this, but you could replace the last two D chords of the rhythm with this lead if you wanted to. Or if you're recording this, you can just add it on top. At the playthrough at the end, I'll add this on top of the rhythm chords so you can hear both at the same time. But we're gonna start off the same way we did with the intro with these two fingers here on the seventh fret. We're gonna start by hitting this with a quick down, up, down, up. 
Now that's quicker than our usual eighth notes. Those first three plucks are actually triplets. So it'll sound like this. And then we return back to our normal rhythm on the three beats. So three and four. On the end beat, we hit the fifth fret of the first string and then go to the fifth fret of the second string, hit that and slide up. Seventh fret of the third string, back up to the fifth fret and on the seventh fret of the third string. So that whole run in total, three and four and one and two and three and on the four beat, we're going to this shape, which is a D sus two. Now it's the same as a D sus four shape, but we're shifting it all the way up to the ninth and 10th frets. And we're gonna strum from the fourth string onwards and that's how we're gonna end this lead riff. So the outro, And those are all the parts you need to learn for this song. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and I'll have my good friend Eric lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go. Hope you have a happy holidays. Cheers. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzeritohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.